As you may have learned in our video for basic design and text tools in Silhouette Studio, creating text is as simple as choosing the text tool on the left, placing a cursor on the page, and typing the text. Open the text style panel or use the quick access toolbar to choose from any font that's installed on your computer. Adjusting the size is as simple as choosing a preset or typing the desired size into the input box. You can change text properties when text is highlighted in text editing mode or when it's selected as an object. To enter text editing mode, double click the text. If you want to change just a few characters within the text box, you'll need to highlight those while in text edit mode. Let's go a little deeper. When in text editing mode with the green box and flashing cursor, you can use this slider bar on the right to create line breaks in your text. It will first break the text between words, but as you continue to shrink that available space, it will move individual letters down to the next line. Let's say you want to make a welcome sign and you want your text to type vertically. Choosing the vertical option will rotate it so it types down the side. To get each letter on its own line, drag the slider to move those letters down. Change your justification with these options in the textile panel or in the quick access toolbar dropdown. Line spacing adjusts the spacing between the lines. Character spacing adjusts the spacing between letters. Keep in mind this affects the spacing for the entire text box, even if you have just a few letters highlighted. Character spacing is really helpful for certain script fonts that may not overlap as you expect, or when working with text on a path. You can find out more about text to path with our video on how to curve text. There are two more parts of the textile panel I should mention. Kerning is on by default, and you can turn it off here. Kerning adjusts the spacing between letters in your font so they look and fit better together. With most fonts, you won't see a difference, so I recommend leaving it on. Bold, italic, underline, and other options will be available depending on the particular font. I've found that most fonts do not have these options and will be grayed out, but if you have a font that you know has extra characteristics available, Check here with this drop-down arrow. If you want to create a faux bold, you can use your offset tool. If you want to force your text into italics, Designer Edition users and higher can go to the Transform panel and use the Shear tab. The ability to edit text as text ends as soon as you ungroup it, use any modified tools on it like welding, or if you convert it to a path. Saving a copy of your text off to the side before making any of these kinds of changes will keep your original text intact. To keep overlapped letters from cutting into each other, you have two choices. The first is to use the weld function, but keep in mind this loses text properties like font name, size, and ability to change what it says. The second way is in the Send panel. Choose Cut Edge. That's an auto weld that cuts around the outside edge of your letters and ignores overlapped areas. Your text stays editable when using this option. Back in the textile panel, those with designer edition or higher have this tab for glyphs. You can find special characters for your installed fonts and easily add them here. Check out our video for using glyphs in Silhouette Studio for more information on that designer edition feature. The last tab in the textile panel is a spell checker. If you have misspelled words on your page, indicated by a little blue underline on those words, you can right-click to see suggestions, go to spelling to see more suggestions in the spelling panel, or go straight to the spelling panel and use the arrows to cycle through flagged words on the page. Highlight the suggestion and click Replace to fix that word. Advanced Options lets you turn off the automatic spell check, select from some alternate dictionaries, and add new words to a custom dictionary. Here's a tip on copying and pasting text. If you copy text from another program, you can paste it into Silhouette Studio, either with or without starting a text cursor first. 
It doesn't keep the font when copying, so you'll need to adjust that after it's on your work page. One last thing about working with text in Silhouette Studio. If you fill your text with a pattern, the pattern fills each letter at a different scale. To get the pattern to look uniform across the letters, simply weld the text. Just make sure you've got your text the way you want before welding, because you can no longer edit it as text. Well, that should get you well on your way working with text in Silhouette Studio. Thanks for watching.